are you Pistons fans? So in today's video, we're going to be talking about Ben Matherin. But before we get to that, please make sure you guys like this video. Today's like go is 200 likes. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I drop consistent Pistons content. Now let's get right into this. Now, I don't know how many people actually realize this, but the draft is very close. It's on June 23rd. That's literally nine days away. And I'm yearning for this day to finally come so we can get this over with, all the rumors, all the reports. I wanna know what the Pistons are actually going to do. Now we have some new information here on Ben Matherin. So put the image on the screen right now. This reads, Benedict Matherin has fans in Detroit. He had a solid workout in the Motor City this past week. Sources told The Athletic via James Edwards III. So one thing that I will say is that I am happy that they're not overhyping this at all. All that they said is that this was a solid workout. You know, I definitely remember last season when it was around this time and it was still a debate about what the Pistons take, Kay Cunningham or Jalen Green. And I remember reports came out saying that Jalen Green had this amazing workout with the Pistons and that, that there was a stronger possibility that we could take him at number one after his performance at the workout, which is just hyperbole, it's over the top. I don't like when reports like that come out so i definitely appreciate them saying that this is just a solid workout with the pistons now i have this interesting clip that i want to share with you guys about ben matherin and this is basically him speaking on how he developed a dominant mentality when it comes to sports and himself as a person play the clip i read that you were a hockey player yeah i used to play and hockey. you played soccer yeah i played football you played football right. how much football right. how much did those sports kind of help you become uh, I feel like hockey really helped me by just being more dominant. Like, you know, just put something on my shoulders and be like, you know. But um, football as well, that's why I play, I play hockey before playing football. They both helped me to be, to be a little bit more physical and um, you know, to, show, to show the people what I, you know, what I do. You're a winger, a defender, or what were you? I was actually a defender. I used, to be, I used to be taller than everybody, a little bit stronger, so I was defending. Yeah, so hearing him say that, if we're talking about mentality-wise, he kind of reminds me of Jimmy Butler in some ways. You know, that dog that's just inside of them. You know, guys who just want to defeat their opponents, play tough, play hard, and just win basketball games. So I definitely got Jimmy Butler vibes when I was watching that clip there. And then also another clip that I want to share with you guys is that he was asked a question about what he believes his ceiling is. Play the clip right now there's so much talk about ceilings you know in, in draft prospects um how do you view your ceiling compared to other people and maybe what the outside noise has been about you in your game um i mean i feel like i haven't reached my, my full potential i think i'm far from it i think obviously I have, I have places where i need to improve for me to reach um the best of myself and um but i'm all about learning and growing as a player so for sure so it's cool to hear him take accountability for himself, say that he is far away from his fullest potential. So you can obviously see that he's a very confident young man, but he's not arrogant and he recognizes what he needs to improve on. And it's not just him. Literally all of the prospects coming up in this draft, even the guys at the top like Bancaro or Jabari or Chet, they have a lot of things that they need to work on as well. I believe this is a really weak class, especially compared to what we've had in years past, the Zion draft, the last draft with Kay Cunningham. I think this is a fairly weaker class than we're usually accustomed to. These guys just seem to have more holes in their game than previous players have had. And that is also why I won't be upset regardless of who the Pistons take at number five. My preference is Ben Matherin, but if they go take Keegan Murray, if they go take Sharp, if they take Ivy, it doesn't really matter to me because all of these guys are very close. All of these guys have holes in their games that they can easily fix and get better at. They can train at these things and also with NBA coaches, develop them the right way. Heck, even some of the guys who are projected, you know, around eight, nine, and 10, someone like Johnny Davis, for example, or Dyson Daniels, another guy who I made a video on, even those guys, it's not like they're far behind the rest of the pack. All of these dudes' potential are near identical for me. So that's basically all that I have to say. Quick little video here. Just wanted to update you guys on the fact that the Pistons did meet up with Matherin. They did have a workout with him, and apparently it went well. So Pistons fans, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Thank y'all for 5K, and I'm out.